gentlemen boys and girls what a time to be alive what a time to be a part of the brilliantly dumb faithful this is the brilliantly dumb show on big game bob coming to you on your local airwaves welcome back to yet another edition here of the brilliantly dumb show we got a very action-packed show here for you folks first things first um we got an interview today coming with jenna sims who is brooks kepka's fiance um you know, the thing with Jenna Sims is she's really kind of become a big face in the golf world. Um, and we're going to be bringing her in for an interview. Got to ask about the Brooks and Bryson feud. You know, as much as she probably doesn't want to talk about that, that absolutely has got to be asked. We're all wondering it. It's kind of taken over the golf world. But again, she's really kind of become a face in golf. A lot of people know her. Um, they see her. She's at every one of Brooks Kepka's tournaments. Um, when he's in the finals, he goes over to kiss her the whole nine yards. So Jenna Sims will be joining us on the Brilliantly Dumb show today. So we're going to be interviewing her. Before we get into any of that, um, very, very big announcement. For the Brilliantly Dumb Show, it is football season. It is time. Now, I had a couple different companies approach me. I had DraftKings approach me. I had Bovada approach me about doing something on the Brilliantly Dumb Show. And I was deciding who I wanted to pick. I know I wanted to do a football segment. No, I wanted to do some type of gambling segment on the show, especially with how big the, the betting is and, and whatnot. And a company approached me by the name of Prize Picks. You see it on the hat, you see it on the shirt, phenomenal shirt. Um, the hat looks a little bit ridiculous on me, but they don't specialize in hats. They specialize in sports gambling. Ladies and gentlemen, what I like about Prize Picks is they do things a little bit differently, okay? Prize Picks is the easy way to play daily fantasy football. So not only do you get fantasy football, but you can bet on prize picks on whether or not fantasy football projections, for example, Ezekiel Elliott over on their 17.5 fantasy football points. So not only can you have a game against somebody, what you want to do in your other fantasy leagues, you can actually bet this. So I, I just think it's interesting. I think it's definitely different. I like the guys over there at prize picks. I think they got a lot to offer. It's an easy site to control. Go ahead. They're going to match your deposit of up to $100. So go ahead, deposit $100 into prizepicks.com. You can get the app over there at Prize Picks. They're going to match any deposit up to $100. You pick two to five players and an under over on their projections that they have for fantasy football that weekend. And you can win up to 10 times on any entry, kind of just like a parlay. Um, but with fantasy football to where you could bet on their projections. And then you also have the other stuff you could bet over under on how many yards Ezekiel Elliott will have, how many yards Matt Ryan will throw for a ton of different things that you could do. It's going to be our new sponsor. We're going to have a segment right out of the gate. Um, we said goodbye to our dear friend, Jerry Don last week. He's already tearing it up at Barstool. No surprise there. It's awesome to see. The guy deserves it. Um, again, when we had the farewell episode last week, um, I will always be in Jerry Don's corner. We're going to miss him. You cannot replace a Jerry Don. Just like you can't replace a Gary Bertier, you cannot replace a Jerry Don. And we would never set out to replace a Jerry Don. However, who's going to be coming in for our prize picks segment for our prize pick sports segment. And what we're going to do is we're going to give our pick every single week. And then we're going to be doing a live Instagram live every week. I want you folks to be able to bet with us, come with us. We'll be streaming on the Instagram live. We're bringing in a guy who I consider just an insider. He's going to make you laugh. He's got a phenomenal personality. He's a Jersey guy. He's an Italian and he just knows the game of football unlike anybody I've ever seen. He's a massive, massive Chicago Bear fan, but he's got that sports talk radio vibe to him that I absolutely love. A lot of people have listened to the show. You guys know um, I love sports talk radio, and he's got that voice to him. He is an absolute guru 
when it comes to football, when it comes to knowing players, what to pick, what to take. I've been going with his picks for probably the last 10 picks. And he's been phenomenal. Nothing short of phenomenal. He knows the game. Um, he goes by Bear Down Cuz on Instagram. I know him and love him as Michael Villani. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, for your first prize pick sports bet, let's bring on the big fella himself. This is Mikey Villani. He's actually six foot seven, which is a fun fact. And let's give a nice round of applause for our guy here, Sir Mikey Villani. And I'll take it to tell you what, Villani. To come here opening day of the Brilliantly Dumb Show, rocking the Bears visor, it is exactly what I wanted out of you. Huge visor guy, well documented. I mean, it, and Mikey, what I did is I really did. You just messed me. This must be some fucking intro before I let you in from the waiting room. What I did is I, I gave the people a little bit of background on Mikey Villani, on Bear Down, because and I set the bar high for you. I said, I told the people that we were bringing in the prize pick sports segment. And I said, you, you're one of, I really consider you an insider. I just think, you know, sports probably better than anybody that I've ever seen. And the bets that you have given me have been nothing short of phenomenal. So if you can bear down, introduce yourself to the faithful here, and then we're going to get into our pick. Ladies and gentlemen, Mikey Bear Down Cuz coming to you live from New Jersey. That's right, the Garden State, Bob's alma mater. But, you know, runner of the Bear Down Cuz Instagram page, please check me out if you haven't already. And Bobby's right. I mean, I'm here, and Bob's here, actually. The prize pick segment, we're here to make you guys some money. We said to ourselves, there's a gift that we might have something brewing here where people could take advantage and we could put some money in some people's pockets. And it's just not right to hold that back from people. It's, it's about sharing. It's about caring. It's about, you know, giving back to the brilliantly dumb faithful community. That's what it's all about really. And for me personally, yes, my page is mostly covering the, uh, the travesty of an NFL franchise that is the Chicago bears. But at the same time, it's about content and specifically around this time of the year, it's a broad football scope with a lot of gambling, a lot of gambling picks because with the access we have now and all the States we have now and the legalization of sports gambling, make no mistake about it. If you're going to jump in, if you're going to get your feet wet, if you want to get a little adventurous, now is the time to do so jump in now while the water's warm, ladies and gentlemen, don't wait, don't wait. That's why we're here. I'll tell you this bear down. Uh, I'll oh, tell you this, and you make a good point, and, and it would mean the world to me, okay, to be able to give back to the faithful, the people yes. that tune in every single Tuesday, and, you know, with the, the departure of Jerry Don, and he was one of the only guys I've seen that really – could take down Vegas. Vegas always has the upper edge. They always have the upper edge. And when prize picks came along, I said to myself, I was like, okay, who else can we get? Who else can we bring on that I think truly does have an upper hand? And that is you, Mikey Villani. And there would be nothing better. Could you imagine, okay, if Villani comes on out of the gate, and I don't want to put this on you. It's very tough to do. But you're gonna. But you're I'm gonna. going to. It's exactly what I'm going to do. Okay. It would be very special. If Mikey Villani comes in out of the gate with the Bears visor and this guy is just ripping out winner after winner after winner, it's a lot to take in. And we're going to stick with you the whole way. I'm telling people this is the guy. It would be phenomenal to just come out on a tear. Let's win the faithful some money, Mikey Bear down. Before we begin, I want to remind everyone out there in gambling land, please remember this. It's a marathon, not a sprint. <laughs> yeah. What is the percentage look like at the end of the year? At the end of the football season, what does your percentage look like? Are you picking 60%? Are you picking 65%? Because if that's what you're picking and you're staying consistent with what you're doing, you're going to make money. That's the key here. That's the key. We can't go off the hinges. We can have a lot of fun. We can have a lot of fun. We're going to pick a lot of winners. But the consistency and the remembering that it's a marathon, not a sprint. Now, that being said, five-star plays, four-star plays, we're, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. 
but it's a marathon, not a sprint. And always, always gamble responsibly, Bob. And, and I like that you added that in there, Bear Down. What's great, too, I mean, along with it, if you could give, if we could go 60, 65%, so we're going to be in this together. Um, but what's interesting, too, what I like with the prize picks, you can combine these fantasy projections as if they're parlays. So you could do different running backs for the over of the fantasy projection, whatever their fantasy projection is, wow. obviously subject to change on the lines. You can combine them in a parlay, which I don't know many other sites that could do it which is something that intrigued me with the prize picks folks get signed up prizepicks.com. Um, we'll put the link out there for you folks, but let's get rocking and rolling. I'm excited. Mikey bear down. Um, let's get after it. Let's fucking get after it. So folks, it, just a reminder in order to make sure that you get the hundred dollars match. When you signed up, use promo code, Bobby props. That's promo code, bro, Bobby props, put in a hundred, get back a hundred at the end of the season. Prize picks is going to be randomizing a winner. That winner gets an all inclusive trip paid for to go play around the golf with me and Joey cold cuts at a place that you please a hundred dollars. You get you a hundred dollars promo code Bobby props. But now Mikey bear down. It's time to view the board. It's time to hit a couple winners and it's time to make the faithful some money in the visor bear down. Let me know what you're seeing here, pal. Well, what I'm taking a look at right now is I'm taking a look at prizepicks.com. We're looking at the, uh, the fantasy aspect of it. So we're looking at, Ezekiel Elliott, we're looking at Ronald Jones, Amari Cooper, Mike Evans, CeeDee Lamb, Chris Godwin, Blake Jarwin, and Rob Gronkowski. And we're looking at their totals of fantasy scores. So basically, people out there, what you're going to be doing is you're going to have to select two players, two players, and choose their over-under of that projected fantasy score. So Ezekiel Elliott, as you can see if you're following along, he's a 16.2 fantasy score projection for Thursday night's week one opener against the Super Bowl champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers live Raymond James Stadium in Tampa, Florida, where the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are giving seven and a half points uh, to the Dallas Cowboys. Now, my opinion on the game itself, I think Tampa controls this game. I think Dallas, I'm concerned about that, Dak Prescott's overall health. So I'm going to be very, very cautious at what I do in terms of the Dallas Cowboys. The one play I do like, and you have to choose two of these players. So you got to pick two fantasy totals from the players I had mentioned before. I like the Evans play over 14 and a half fantasy points for Mike Evans. Don't Mike, Evans it. Mike Evans fantasy score total is a 14 and a half. I like the over on that. And I also happen to think that Ronald Jones's uh, fantasy total is low. I think 8.0. I think that's I think that's a score he can easily go over. The Dallas defense still not tested. I understand that they they drafted all defensive players. I understand they added Micah Parsons from Penn State. I understand all of that. But at the end of the day, I still don't trust the Dallas defense until they start putting up some respectable numbers in the regular season. They went 0-4 in the preseason. Preseason doesn't mean anything. I understand that as well, but I am not confident in the Dallas defense. So for me right now, the two that jump out at me right off the bat is Ronald Jones over 8.0, Mike Evans over 14 and a half. Now, Mikey, we we are in this together. We have an account with prize picks that we're we in sure this do. together. We sure do. So, we got to come to a compromise, Bob. Listen, we got to come to a compromise. If you're not off, feeling what I'm what I'm throwing down, Bob, you let me know. You come you I, come out and tell me. I'll be honest with you. I love what you're doing. I'm I'm sold on it. I agree that Ronald Jones at eight points for the fantasy score. That to me, for a starting running back. He's just so low, especially against a Dallas defense that I don't think is that good. I'm fine with the Mike Evans on the over. We're going to be doing this. We're going to be doing this Thursday. So I'll be live streaming Thursday. Thursday is the only week we're not going to have bear down on the live stream. It's going to be the opening night of the NFL. Um, so I'm in on the Mikey Evans over 14.5 fantasy score. I'm in for the Ronald Jones over eight points, which I think is really low. I love a good under, Mikey Bear Down. They don't call me Bobby Unders for nothing. Okay. So to start this thing off, and mind you, it, this plays like a parlay. So you put these guys together, you got to do a minimum of two, and you play it like it's a parlay. Um, so shit, Bear Down, if you give us 60%, if we hit 
on these somehow, some way. It's pretty much parlays. We'll be rich by the end of the NFL season. That's by right. no means is that an easy thing to do. Here's no. here's the under I'm going to hit. Go ahead. I don't like it, Bear Down. I love it. I love it. Bob, Bob, before you go, can we just explain Ronald Jones at eight? All he's yeah. got to do is score. All he's got to do is score a touchdown. If he breathes, if he breathes, if he steps onto the field and has a pulse and scores one touchdown, it's done. And by so, the way, if it, when Tampa is at the goal line or when Tampa's in the red zone, Jones is the guy. No, Jones is the guy. Jones so, is the guy. That's why it's a no brainer for me. The number jumps out. It's, 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 it jumps believe, out. And I can't imagine anybody going on the under of eight points for a starting running back. No, you either you either take the over or you don't touch it. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Evans, I think, could have a big night. Um, with that, so being go ahead. I did not mean to interrupt you. Go no, ahead. no, you're right. I mean, with with if we're banking on a big night for Mike Evans at over fourteen point five fantasy points, I want to go the under. Tell me what you think about this, Chris okay. Godwin at fifteen and a half. I think is high. Uh, here's the thing: is I'm not all aboard that train, but I'm. I will say this. Um, I like the Evans play a lot more than the Godwin play for a reason. I like the Evans play a lot more than the Godwin play for a reason. I just think when it Godwin, here's the thing with Godwin, it's dangerous with him because he's the big hitter, right? Um, Evans is the big target guy. So in the red zone, he's so overwhelmingly physical and big. I just think that when Brady gets inside your 40, inside your 35, Evans is the, is the target guy for the end zone. So that's why I like the Evans play. And Evans is Evans will accumulate. He'll accumulate. He'll compile. He'll compile. Godwin to me is more of a is more of a heavy hitter, which makes it a little dangerous of a play, Bob. But I don't hate it because I'll tell you this: the Evans play jumped out, and the Godwin play I was not I was not as comfortable saying I would go over on the Godwin play as I was with the Evans play. So yes, I I would feel more comfortable going under on Godwin than I would on Evans. So let me ask you this: bear down. If we do Godwin as our third, okay, so we parlay the Mike Evans, Ronald Jones over 14.5 and eight. If we do Chris Godwin, okay, say, let's say we don't do Chris Godwin. Is there something else on the board that really pops out of you? I want, I would love to start off hot week one. And if there's something that you love, we'll go bear down the whole way. Like me, it's something that's tricky. Like they got Gronkowski at 7.8 fantasy points, I think is tricky. Tricky number, yeah. Yep. Um, Blake Jarwin, the tight end for the Cowboys, 7.5, another tricky one. Um, I think, I think Jarwin could go under because I think the Tampa Bay, the, so Tampa Bay is going to be covering him with a safety. They have Antoine Winfield Jr. One of the best in football. And they got the heat seeking, the heat seeking missile at linebacker. So they are going to have the talent to cover Jarwin. So that number, honestly, the 7.5, I go under. I go on. No, it's amazing. Scare me. Bear down. It and scare and me. it makes me happy because it really just shows why Bear Down is going to be our guy. The fact that you know, and I'm a big football fanatic, okay? You talk about X's and O's for you to know that Blake Jarwin, the Dallas tight end, will be covered by a safety of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers is why we bring in Mikey Villar. Well, you know, just b- basic. Basic football one on one, right? Like a corner is not going to be covering a tight end, right? Uh, in mo- in most all cases, like a corner is not going to be covering. They got Devin White, the stud from LSU. He's the, he's a he, the guy's a monster. I mean, he's an absolute monster. And they got Antoine Winfield Jr. They could bring him down. So and he's a tremendous player. So I think Tampa blankets Jarwin well enough. And I I think I think the Jarwin under is a good play, Bob. If we're going to talk unders, if you want to talk unders, I like the Jarwin under. He likes the Jarwin under. Okay, so let me ask you this. How much do we play? Folks, you could play with us. You could bet with the same amount of us, whatever it may be. You could go against us. We will be live streaming Thursday. So I'd like to bring everybody involved, and I'd like to have the people on the live with us. Um, We're going with the bear down power play. They give you the option of the flex play to where you just have to hit two out of three and get paid one and a quarter more than what it actually is. Or you do the power play, you have to hit all three, and you get 2.25 more, which is the exact same thing as hitting a parlay. No bear down. Correct. Correct. So, the, uh, the power play is your parlay translation, yes. So here's what we're going to do. How do you like this? Let's start off at $100. 
to win $500. Got to hit all three. We got the Mike Evans over 14.5. We got the Ronald Jones over eight. And we got the Blake Jarwin under 75, 100 to win 500. Mikey Villani, how does that sound to you? I think a nickel is a nice payday for the first night of the fo- uh, night of professional football. And another thing about the Jarwin play, why I like the under, I do feel like this is a game where Dallas can fall behind quite a bit. And if Dallas falls behind quite a bit, the targets are going to be consumed by Amari Cooper and CeeDee Lamb, not so much the tight end. I, I can't see them going underneath to the tight end in a game where they're playing catch up. I just can't. So that's another reason, but I love the hundred dollar play, Bob. You want X's and O's. Mikey Bear Down's going to give you X's and O's, but most importantly, it's our mission, Bear Down, to go ahead and give back to the faithful, win the faithful for money. Trust me when I say this on Prize Picks. I'm not just sitting here bullshitting you. We've had other offers on different companies to come in. I think Prize Picks does things differently. I love, love, love the bets of fantasy players. It's beyond just your regular fantasy team. You could go over under on their projections, prizepicks.com promo code, Bobby props, a hundred dollars matches your hundred dollars right there. And the raffle to win around with me and Joey cold cuts, which is pretty special. Mikey Villani, phenomenal debut out of you kid Thursday night. Let's get it. Let's get all three. Let's get the people $500 right out of the gate. You know, Bob, There's nothing quite like NFL opening weekend. And while they have moved the opener over the years to the Thursday night, which I'm not the biggest fan of, you still have to be. There's got to be a little blood pumping. There's got to be a little extra rev in the engine for Thursday night this week. There just has to be. You're seeing the defending Super Bowl champions. You're seeing an offense in Dallas that's supposed to be quite a prolific offense. It's just something, just something different is going to be in the air on Thursday. And you got to be a little excited for it. You got to be a little emotion, emotional for it. Football's an emotional game. And if you watch it, you should be emotional too. And you're going to be really emotional once those parlays start creeping up and those totals start creeping up for Ronald Jones, creeping up for Mike Evans. And Blake Jarwin has got a zero going into the fourth quarter. You're going to feel real good about yourself. If I see Ronald Jones go up the gut for a one yard rush on the first series of the game, I mean, I'm going to go ballistic. I'm going to be alive. Now we're going to have Mikey bear down for the Thursday lives. This is going to be a thing. It's going to be a recurring thing. Come on with us. Come on, join us. It's going to be fun. It's going to be special bear down. We love you. And we look forward to episode after episode prize picks. Mikey Villani, you know, the drill I'm telling you folks, I'm telling you, he knows the game. He knows the game. Um, And now what we're going to do, folks, there it is. I wanted to give you guys that announcement. I wanted to start off there. Now what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and jump into our interview uh, with Jenna Sims. This is Brooks Kepka's fiance. Again, have to ask the Bryson and Brooks thing. It's big. It's big. We want to know. She's probably not going to want to talk about it, but we have to ask. I met her at the Northern Trust um, a few weeks ago, the tournament going on there. Um, very nice gal. Looking forward to have her. We're going to send it on over into that. This is Jenna Sims and Bobby Fairways. Folks, we interrupt this edition of the Brilliant Dumb Show to let you know that the Brilliant Dumb Show is brought to you by our good friends over at Manscaped. Gamblers of all shapes and sizes, our friends at Manscaped, have a can't-miss bet for you today. That's betting on the Manscaped Lawnmower 4.0. Folks, if you want to protect your nutsack, do it the right way, not just with the lawnmower. They do it all. Crop cleansers, ball cleansers. Take care of your testicles. Take care of your full package, and you could do so with our friends at Manscaped. Get 20% off and free shipping with promo code 20 Bobby, that's two zero Bobby, and take care of those nuts today. The Lawnmower 4.0 has you covered for shaving your balls, butt, and even don't let me forget about the gooch. Talk about a backdoor cover with our friends at Manscaped. 20 Bobby, free shipping, 20% off, whole lot to be excited about. Manscaped. There she is. There she is, Miss Jenna Sims. Jenna. Not many people at me this fired up seven in the morning, ready to rock and roll as you do, Jenna Sims. Amazing. You like this? Yeah, big tie-dye girl. Yeah, I didn't know if you would think that maybe this is too bold or not. Too bold? Do you have you? No, there's no no (laughs) such thing. 
<laughs> Jenna, I, I mean, I, I'm up and at them. 7 a.m. fired up, ready to rock and roll. You're an up and at him, ready to rock and roll. The only person it sounds like who wasn't up and at him is Brooks himself. He, yeah, he was um, slow to get out of the bed today, but he's successfully made it to the gym, so that's a great start. Do, I mean, do you think that, are, are you guys going to make the tea time on time? It's like you guys are showing up to the oh. golf course with me. <laughs> no, he gets there about like an hour and a half before and he doesn't tee up until 115 so we're good okay all right good 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 you got time i i've been excited for this because i actually i almost feel like you have kind of pioneered and 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 paved the way to where girlfriends wives fiancés in your case in the golf world are so recognized now in the game yeah. what, what i don't think i pioneered that i mean Amy Mickelson, she's a legend. True, I was, true. Um, before that, there was Elon Woods. I mean, there, I don't think I did. I just think I, prior to golf, I was already in the entertainment industry. Yep. And that's a little bit different, I think, from most. Because I, the transition from LA to South Florida was actually really smooth for me. Like, I instantly, my agents out in LA helped me get agents in, out of Miami. And I just kept working. And I think... Some people don't really know that I had a life before Brooks. Yeah. Um, I actually had a great life before Brooks. I have a great life now. Um, but yeah, that confuses people sometimes. <laughs> your your IMDb page is pretty fascinating, by the way. I mean, that's a big that's a big resume that you got on there, Jenna. Well, I did a lot of B movies in my twenties. You know, a lot of I've been killed by sharks twice. I've had my head chopped off. So yeah, I, I miss doing B movies. I wish they would knock on my door again but I'm in like a weird age I'm you know early 30s so it's like uh I'm not quite the mom yet and I'm definitely not the you know the blonde you know sorority girl anymore <laughs> was that I mean was that strange for you in the sense of and as you said you had this big successful career even prior to entering the world of golf now it's like all of a sudden now you have two things coming your way you have the entertainment thing going on and then all of a sudden now you're introduced to the golf world does that kind of come at you as a big whirlwind you know Honestly, very rarely, because um, I audition for my jobs, you know, just like everybody else does. And I think in South Florida, the casting directors, I have no idea. Like, I'm just talent number 452. Um, very rarely, some sometimes I'll be in a room and they'll, they'll be like, oh, my God, like, Brooks, you know, whatever. But I, I don't know if it's actually helped. <laughs> what about, like, so what about the golf world? Why do you think that? you like it, it's amazing to me and again and as i said girlfriends fiancés and all that they, they've really become a big part of it and i love it and actually the way that we, this kind of came about for us is i actually saw you at the northern trust but i knew who you were well before that because i'm friends with sophie julia and i heard you on her show okay so this is fascinating because when i came up to you i'm walking by and i said to my friend i said I got to get a picture with her. She's a big face yeah. in the golf world. There's no way that I can't get it. I came over and asked you for a picture. In the middle of our picture, one of my fans asked me for a picture. So I'm kind of looking at you and you're like, what the hell is going on here? No, there's been a few times where there's like radio personalities. There's a guy in Memphis I took a picture with and then other people came up to him and um, you. It's, it's definitely happened. I think the most embarrassing part is I'm so like, this might sound bad, but I'm a lot of people nowadays like take pictures with me. I was going to ask you that. I was going to ask you how often you're getting that. Oh, my God. All the time. I mean, a hundred plus times around, which is kind of crazy. Um, but, you know, it's like for their Snapchat story. And I'm like, whatever, let's do it. Let's carry on. Like, you know, most people like are ready to go. And they're like, love you. Let's go. And I'm like, great. Have a good day. But the other day in Baltimore, um, some these two dudes came up to me and they're like, can you take a picture they said it just like that. And then turns out they wanted me to take a picture of them. And I was like, yeah, sure, no problem. And I like stood beside him and he was like, what are you doing? And I was like, oh no. See, you know, that's unbelievable to me. Cause even before I came up to you, I'm thinking to myself, she's getting this, she's gotta be getting this all day. 
to where you go go. It's almost better if you don't find Brooks because they almost know if you're following Brooks, you might as well just follow somebody else around the golf course. It's like they know. You think, honest to God, it could end up being about a hundred a day. Yeah. Oh yeah. That is. And it's insane. not like just at the golf course. Like obviously, I'm there to follow Brooks, so they're gonna. That's where they find me, but. It, it happens at bars. It happens walking down the street. Like it's not, it's more prevalent, of course, at the golf tournament, but I've turned a corner in Chicago one time and I about ran into a dude and he was like, Jenna, oh my God, let's take a picture. It was like instant. Like I literally was taping an audition there and I've ran into somebody. And Did he, he was, follow you up with, you know, I saw you in Sharknado? <laughs> that is a popular one. The 50 foot cheerleader is obviously my first big role. They named me from that from you know instagram or whatever it's just it varies now let me ask you something do you okay on a weekend okay say say brooks is playing well okay on a weekend when you guys are in the tournament and you guys go out throughout the weekend you you guys are always getting recognized you go out here and there is there a different vibe going out when you guys are in the hunt in the tournament compared to not to where you could kind of let it loose a little bit more well pre-covid I, if he's in contention, I don't typically go out because it's, it's so deep. The crowd is so deep. I can't even watch the golf. So it, I'd actually see more shots in the clubhouse watching, but now that they're limiting the capacity, I think he would, I would definitely go out and watch. It's not a matter of like staying in the clubhouse to, you know, not support him, but I literally can't watch if, if pre COVID because there's so many people, especially if he's paired with, you know, another big name like Tiger or Phil, Someone like that, it's just forget about it. So, but now, now absolutely, it's it's different because on Sunday, if he's in contention, I'm, you know, I'm trying to see every single shot because I'm like sending good vibes. I'm like, come on, I'm like willing the ball in the hole, right. you know? Right. Do you, there's always this, I think golf fans have a big spotlight on them and there's a lot of controversy between the way that fans should act when they're there what's what's your take on it how do you think do you think that it's either a little too stuffy to where fans could let it loose a little bit more or they're letting it be a little too loose um i don't think they're letting it be too loose per se but i think there's a happy medium noji brooks's chef like we we walk a lot together and we always say like man i wish they had music like this would be so fun if like music was playing right now that's obviously never going to happen yeah. <laughs> They have to concentrate and hear the, the listening and like the sound of the club head hitting the ball is like a big part of it. But it would be so fun if it was more like not every tournament was like the waste management, but if they had little elements, like if they could cheer a little bit louder and be I don't a little disagree. But it also depends on where you are in the world too. Like in Europe for the European, you know, the British Open and any tournament over there they really respect the game like they even clap for bad shots so like sometimes if i can't see brooks i just go off crowd reaction especially here in atlanta yep. it's a lot of people here I, if i can kind of tell how close he hits it to the hole based on you know what the crowd does but in europe you have no idea because they clap no matter if it's 50 feet away or five feet. It's like the same because they like respect it so much it's a totally different world yeah. And do you notice later in the day where it starts to get to where fans are getting a little more? Because that's even on TV, you kind of notice that. Yeah, to where it starts to get a lot rowdier. Direct correlation to how much alcohol is being served. Without question. Without and question. Saturday, I will say Saturdays is the most rowdy because Thursday and Friday, people are like, you know, they got to work the next day or they're going to work the same day. Saturday, they're like, we're going, we're letting loose. And even yep. Sunday is a little more chill because they're like, I got to go to work on Monday. Now, so we'll go out there. And I don't know if you've seen the videos that we go ahead and we, that I put out to where, where I'm talking to the different golfers. Have you been able to see that? I've seen a few of them. I saw the one. Yeah, I did actually. Cause yeah, I get, I got, I get tagged in those a lot. You do. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Uh, now what I try and do is, is it's funny, but I try and be encouraging. I never will really go at somebody. Um, but the guy that that I cannot crack, he will he will not. I just can't crack him regardless. I can't make him laugh, can't make him smile. Is Brooks. He is so so locked in, regardless of what you say, you're not gonna get much out of him. There's a few things that you could say, but I'm never going to spill the tea on oh, that. Oh, this is interesting, Jenna. This is very interesting. 
<laughs> people come up to me a lot and they're like, you know, Blake of the year. And like, does he, does he think it's cool? Or does he think it's funny? And I'm like, to be honest, this isn't new information. Like he's not going to react because yeah. he's already heard Blake of the year 300 times. Today. Yeah. And they're like that, like blew their mind. You could see their wheels turning going. <gasps> yeah. I'm like, yeah, he hears it 15 times on every single tee box. Like, because you just said it, he's not going to be like, Hey, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Like, you yeah. gotta, you gotta change it up a little bit. Gotta find something different. <laughs> I gotcha. I gotcha. Now what, I think kind of goes overlooked, okay? And I want to ask you, with the whole Bryson Brooks fiasco, and I'm sure you're, you know, in the middle of it, you've seen a lot of it. What I think goes overlooked, first off, I think it's amazing for golf. It gets people talking. It's drew a lot of people to golf. I also think from the standpoint that at the same time, it's a great PR move in the sense of, again, people are talking. It's how much of that feud is PR and how much does Brooks actually not like Bryson? Well, that's his answer, his question to answer because I'm not involved at all. Um, but I think rivalry is a healthy in every single sport yeah. and golf is a sport to me, it's a sport. So I I just think people, it's been a while since golf has had like a rivalry and they're, they're kind of shook by it, but obviously I'm standing by my man. So (laughs) as you should, as you should, good for you. I'm actually, I'll plug it right now. I'm wearing some of the new merch. There it is. A hundred percent of the proceeds is going towards his foundation. So get you some, it's it's like really soft, but there it is right there. I love it. I love it. uh, I think the Ryder cup is going to be good because you'll really see them work together hopefully. And um, I I don't know who's going to be paired with who, but everyone's going to be working together and I think it's going to be good. Now, do you, let's say you walk by Bryson DeChambeau's girlfriend, do you naturally, are you now naturally inclined to dislike I her? I honestly don't know if he has a girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't know either. But if I walk by Bryson, I'll certainly say hello. Like he's never done anything to me. I got you. So you wouldn't be naturally inclined no. now to have the rivalry with Brooke the girlfriend. And I are two individual people. Like we, I mean, that's a lot of people get that confused. Like we are two individual people. I, I have my own life and my own opinions and he has his own life and his own opinions. So I, I, I saw Bryson down at the valet here. I mean, there's, I have no reason to not say hi to him. Good. And do you, do you think that a lot of it is dislike for each other? Or do you think that they play it a little bit just to, again, in a sense of to get the golf world talking. And again, it's a great PR play. And by the way, that's something that you got to be getting all the time. I get that a lot. Yeah. But right now it's the Portnoy thing. Do you think he's going to be Portnoy? Do you think that is like first and foremost? Yeah. So, and now that's coming this week. No, it's yeah. It's coming Tuesday. So, okay. So clarify this for me. So Brooks is going up. Brooks is going to be going lefty against them. Yes. Brooks is playing lefty and Portnoy is playing normal. I saw the Brooks swing lefty. I think the Brooks swing lefty is going to even this. I mean, I think that'll destroy him. He's, he's really talented. He's um, I've seen him practice a few times left. He's, it's actually really impressive. Like he's, he's an athlete. And I would say that even if I wasn't <laughs> with him. <laughs> now I got to And by the way, I want to congratulate you six months since you guys got engaged Six months. It was on March 3rd, which is three, three, my lucky number. I would think that Jenna Sims and Brooks Kepka, this is going to be a power wedding, no? I mean, I don't see <laughs> you guys doing something small. I think you're going to take out all of Jupiter. We are doing a destination, and we are trying to keep it kind of small, but small for us might be a large number to other people. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're getting married next summer. Um, we're actually kind of taking it super slow and super chill. We have an amazing planner, and I'm actually, surprisingly enough, not a bridezilla. Like everything she's presented to me, Let I'm like, flow. I love it. And Brooks and I are both on the same page. Like we've already, you know, we went venue shopping and we've looked at save the dates and we're, it's crazy how much we're actually on the same page. So that's a breath of fresh air. And I got my dress. So a, a lot of the hard stuff is really kind of past us. we got a photographer. I'm still, you know, I'm working on hair and makeup people, which will be a big deal for me. Um, but it's been, uh, it's been pretty smooth. Is it weird having, like, is it strange? And again, you've been in the entertainment world, so you've been there before and you're kind of familiar with it, but the amount of publicity that you have now, is it different walking out the door now, knowing that at any point, you know what I mean? I doesn't change how I walk out the door. Like this morning I walked the dog and I 
I was a big hot mess. No, it doesn't change the fact. No, it doesn't. Um, the only difference is like prior to Brooks, I was in the press for more of just my film roles. And, you know, I interviewed with Playboy and I did a thing for Maxim, which was amazing things. Um, but now I've like, we've been on TMZ, which I never thought would happen in my <laughs> life. Um, and my, my most, my life's most embarrassing moments have actually been caught, you know, on international television. Like when I was photographed, you know, looking at Tiger or like when Brooks snubbed me for the kiss at the PGA a couple of years ago, like those are like really embarrassing moments. And like, they've been, you know, viral sensations, I guess. So that's, that's different. <laughs> did you know, okay. When, when that happened, did you know that that was going to get the yeah. attention that, and with the way the internet is it's now close to our faces <laughs> so you, did you know right after that that okay this is going to be all over the place not the tiger thing because that literally was caught from a video um and he was coming to give me a hug and congratulate so ridiculous. me i honestly had no idea that was gonna be a thing because i was like he was congratulating me because Brooks had just won, which is fine. And I look up to him. He's a legend. Like he and I had the same birthday. I've always looked up to Tiger. Um, but the the no kiss moment, oh yeah. So you I knew. knew. So it, you go in for it and you knew and you said, oh shit, here we go. The internet's gonna be all over this. Yeah, because it was just off the heels of the tiger thing. So I was oh, like, geez. going to well, it was a year later, but yeah, I was like the camera. I, I was like, yeah. <laughs> and then, you know what? In in your defense, Jenna, if you if you look at the kiss, you don't fully commit to the kiss. No, because I could sense I'm a really good people reader. Like I saw that I he was so dialed in. I mean, he was a contention. He was so dialed in. He was looking. I mean, the cameraman is walking behind. He's walking backwards and we're walking forward. So Brooks is looking beyond the camera at the clubhouse entrance. And I look at him and I'm like, oh yeah, no, 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 no. He's <laughs> so good. That's why he's so mentally tough. And this is why he's so talented at golf. His mental game is better probably than the entire field. So he shut out the entire world to get inside the clubhouse, myself included, which is fine. Like there was no, everyone's like, did you guys fight? I'm like, there were no repercussions. I understand completely that, what was going on so, so you, and I don't anything personally because I'm like we're not we weren't in a fight we it was just that was what happened <laughs> you got to be able to totally at this point in your career you got to be totally able to probably just brush this stuff off no with how used to you are I will be honest the first time I got hate was in this golf world like my I've done terrible movies like like really like B, B comedy movies. And I've never really gotten hate for that. Like the fans of those films, like really kind of rally around me because it's one of those, some of those movies are like so bad, they're good. Um, but in the golf world, people can be really, really mean. Brutal. So I had to really learn how to have thick skin and Brooks actually helped me through that. I was a little like insecure in the beginning because we had kind of just started dating and I'm like, well, what if Brooks sees this? He might leave me. And he, did such a good job of like reassuring me and like being like, no, like, I don't care what anybody says. Like, I love you. I know you. And then once we got over that, it was more of like me just looking at myself going, someone says this, like, that's not true. It almost makes me love myself more. It like really makes me reflect. And I have more love for myself now than I ever have. Good for you. I'm getting more hate than I ever have. <laughs> Do you think in a way it kind of built you? Built me in what way? Made you, made you, made you kind of prone to it, to where it's like you're able to just kind of brush some of this stuff off. Yeah, I'm definitely able, and I have a lot thicker skin now, and I have more confidence now. Yeah, it, it's. I will tell you, you um, again, as as I've said to you before, I I really think, and I was so excited to see even at the Northern Trust, it's just it's cool. I think, and you know, I know you say a lot of other people were, you know, had done it prior and stuff like that. But for, for the new age golfers, it's fun to see faces like yourself. You have um, Paulina Gretzky and out there to where you guys have really become part of the game. And I just think it's cool. And I, I really do. I think you guys are, are great for the game. And I just think it makes it fun. It does. And I enjoy like, I've, I've kind of started posting my, you know, my tournament outfits to try to get you know, I want more of a female following. Like I love, I get why I have a male following, especially because they want to see <laughs> what Brooks is up to and, you know, this, that, and the other. But 
I post my tournament outfits and I think that's a really fun way to interact because girls are always coming at me. What do I wear to this? What do I wear to that tournament specific? Yeah. And so I'm trying to build on that. And that's really fun for me because I love, you know, doing the Instagram thing. Like it's fun. And yeah, I like to, I like that it's a part of my brand now. Right. And is there a, is there a certain buildup, especially come Sundays or whatnot, even driving to the tournament? You know, I saw you oh. the other day, you came oh. out of the car, you got the dog there. It's like, <laughs> Yeah, right when you guys pull in cameras to where it's kind of in a way like your red carpet. I didn't even know that was going to be a thing because I just grabbed the dog and put her in the car because the maids needed to come clean the room. And I was like, we got to get the dog out of here. <laughs> so I put the dog in the car and then I just dropped Brooks off and I came back and dropped the dog back in the room. But yeah, I actually didn't know they were going to be filming us that, like at that moment because normally they just only film you on Sunday. But I guess here it's every day. Um, but no, I don't use that as a red carpet. I guess on Sunday, I do try to dress a little cuter. Um, hey, girl, speaking of the devil, if he's in contention, hey, girl. Um, yeah, she, she, but no, I don't think some, about she it. She got some air, some big time air time yesterday, Jenna. <laughs> I know, unintentionally. I had no idea. <laughs> Well, again, I, I, I just want to say I, you really are. You're awesome for the game. I appreciate you. I'll be at the Ryder Cup, so hopefully that I'll see you there at the Ryder Cup. I know yeah. you guys got your tea time to go to, so go real low today. And, uh, and Jenna, we appreciate you coming on. We really do. Thank you. I'll, uh, I'll see you in uh, Wisconsin. I'll see you in Wisconsin. Jenny, you take care. Good luck today, all right? Thank you. It's great to have Jenna Sims on. The amount of questions we get for the Ask Bob segment that are golf-related – I was excited to have Jenna on. I saw her at the Northern Trust. She's a lot of fun, um, a lot of personality there, um, but it was good. I, I, and I wanted to get her on the podcast. We get so many golf questions. And with the Bryson Brooks thing going on, I always wanted to back Bryson DeChambeau when this whole fiasco started between Bryson and Brooks. Um, and I backed Bryson, but, but then he, he just gave me nothing to work with. You know, there's not really a lot of fun in Bryson DeChambeau. Go back at Brooks one time. Get us all riled up. I know he's got the nerdy type thing, you know, the kind of dorky thing to him. I like that. And I think America can get behind the whole nerdy thing, but you got to meet us halfway. You got to have some fun. Take a stab at Bryson. So lately, you know, Bryson's just been, I mean, take a shot at Brooks, but lately Bryson's been disappointing me a little bit. There's not much more to go off of to where I like Jenna now. Maybe I just go team Brooks. Regardless, I think it's incredible for golf. Um, that does it here, folks, for another edition of the Brilliantly Dumb Show. We love you. We appreciate you. I believe we are going to be having, just waiting to confirm, we're pretty close to it, that J.J. Redick will be joining us next week. Duke alumni, NBA player, J.J. Redick, one of the best jump shots I've seen in my day. A um, lot that I would want to talk to him about NBA-wise. We will see you folks next Tuesday. We love you. We appreciate you. Take care.